I'm going to show you how I update the Dell server firmware using the console method. And I'm going to start with a R740 here. And I last updated this server back in March last year. And at that time it was updated to that BIOS version 1.6.13. Today we're, it's uh, May. And we're going to go up to 2.5.4 I believe, as of a few days ago anyway. That was the current version. So to do the console method, you can, uh, of course, plug in to your VGA port and keyboard mouse port here. I have mouse, keyboard, monitor, and I am actually plugging into the back here of this server. Monitor, keyboard, mouse, and USB ports, and I have the local network plugged in here this is port one two three four it's actually two plus two um, so this is I think on the screen you're going to see this is maybe port one and two here but if you have a four port one gigabit daughter card this will be one two three four that's how the ports go from the, looking at the back from left to right so let's uh, power it up and I will be pausing at times to not try to optimize your time and not have to wait for slow computers to work. So we're booting up and there's the version number. Okay I'm going to hit F10 on here so we are Make sure we're going to go into the lifecycle controller. Uh, on this text screen, you can hit F10, and if you miss it here, I believe you'll get another option when it gets to the graphical screen. Okay, we're now at the graphical screen, and if you had missed it on the text portion of the boot process, you can always, uh, you'll always have the option here F10, lifecycle controller. You can hit your key there in case you miss it. Again, it'll repeat the BIOS version there. And we'll pause again. And just to let you know, the system is smart and will, upon a reboot from within the lifecycle controller environment, when it reboots, it will automatically return to the lifecycle control environment. So there's no need to hit the F10 key again as it reboots for a second time. And so, for example, if you are, if you've just done some firmware updates and it's automatically going to restart the machine, it will return you to the lifecycle controller environment. Okay, so now notice how we're up in the environment and the cancel button down here, these are both start out white. And um, if you're someone who's really getting after it, time crunch, you're trying to push things along, um, when you when it first pops into this screen, these will both be white and you'll hover your mouse over here and they'll stay white. The computer, it still takes about 10 to 15 seconds for this screen to actually become active to where you can select one of these options. Um, now well, I always just uh, cancel this because I don't need, I don't need the wizard. I'm just, I know what I'm doing so I just cancel the wizard. Again, hover your mouse over here, click on it and Notice how it wasn't super snappy response. This is actually a good response. There will be times when you might have a server that you'll be moving your mouse around and it feels like molasses. And it's very frustrating, mouse movement. And as you um, try to hover over buttons, you'll feel like it overshoots the mouse. And it, it, it just is a very erratic um, mouse driver. And what's causing that is that there is a connection to the remote iDRAC console. So just grin and bear it. Uh, there's ways to correct that. And it's just not worth the time. It might take you 20 to 30 minutes to get that reset. So where the mouse is smooth like this one I'm showing here is. Um, so I'm not going to show you how to do that. That's a whole other procedure. Um, but what you want to do is just exit the wizard here, select the S, and it's going to ask you if you want to configure it later, if you want the prompt, this screen to come up, 
later and uh, because I'm deploying the server for someone else I will let them have that option so I will keep the prompt coming up so I'll choose yes if you chose if you choose no then this screen will be the first screen you see on the next reboot okay so uh, the first thing you want to do is make sure your um, your NIC your your daughter card NIC or even if you have a, a PCI card NIC you want to come in here and configure it in this in the uh, settings menu and you go to network settings and here's if you only have the one single daughter card for your network uh, connections then drop this down there's my port 4 which was on the, all the way on the right side when viewing it from the back and I'm selecting that and I just want to set it up with DHCP if you want to you can set up your static IPs if you need to um, DHCP and the more recent uh, systems have the option for IPv6 and unfortunately you can't say I don't want that you you have to it has to be selected so when you hit finish it's going to try to get uh, get its current I address and it will first search for the IPv4 address obtain it and then it'll search for the the 6 address as you see here and this should fail because we don't have one of those on-premise set up uh, the older BIOSes will sit here lo at longer and will complain about it the newer BIOSes will quickly determine that you don't have one on premise and it'll abort and it won't give you an error message it'll kind of like act like oh everything's good because you got at least your IPv4 address so this is the slightly older BIOS I believe it will complain with one error message here and we'll just uh, cancel through that and there's that error message about the IPv6 only now if you make sure to read that because it might be complaining about your IPv4 address so in my case, I know I got the IPv4 because there was no error message, and I don't care about IPv6. Okay, so it tells me it's successfully saved. I can hit OK, and it will automatically return back to the menu. Now, if I wanted to, I could go back in here, and I could actually uh, go and see what my addresses are, I believe. And there it is. It, it's DHCP, and it's letting me know it's grayed out that I can't change it, and that's what it acquired from the DHCP server. I'm just going to hit back and the next thing we're going to do is go up to firmware update launch the firmware update and we're going to do FTP and I'm not going to go into there's ways to get on Dell's website and create USB sticks and uh, there's ways to create network shares on your network where you can provide it all these drivers which is very good to do if you have you know dozens of servers that you need to regularly be doing updates uh, it's quite a learning curve to figure out both of these scenarios now I'm just going to stick with FTP and I'm going to get the latest available drivers from Dell through their FTP site okay so that'll be automatically selected and hit next now I'm going to let it do its thing here I'm going to show you this error message that happens quite frequently so it should resolve on your local DNS to get that IP address for the FTP site and this has always been so frustrating to me and I'm going to show you a few secrets here let's let this thing error out Okay, so this time it worked. So let me go back to the previous screens. And it, this is so frustrating. Like an hour ago, it did not work. It was like failed to resolve DNS. And I just get so frustrated at times. So what I do is I just go up here and I just change to the... I, what I do is I typically go to like a laptop and I verify what the current IP address is, just ping... FTP Dell site and these are the just so you know these are the only two IP addresses I've ever gotten so I'll sometimes I'll switch between the two and um, I'll just punch that in here
And uh, sometimes if you get error messages for this IP address, just go ahead and switch to the other one I just showed you. And again, I don't know why it has struggles. I want to say it's usually about 60 to 70% of the time it will not resolve the DNS properly on our local network here. And I have tons of other devices that I have no problems with whatsoever. It just is only the servers that have problems sometimes resolving DNS. So I don't know what it is about the firmware DHCP client that has these issues. Uh, maybe some of you can write comments about that below. And note that whenever, whatever you put in that box, the IP address or the actual ftp.dell.com, whenever it finishes getting a successful communication with that location, it will retain that during the next reboots until it's changed again to the next successful. Okay, so uh, now over the years, uh, what's it's this procedure has been pretty flawless and very very easy to do but in the past two years I want to say it's gotten more and more frustrating and it has to do with the way they're changing the BIOS and the IDRAX mostly so what typically happens here is you just anything that needs to be updated is automatically checked and you can scroll down on this list again if you have that mouse kind of vibrating mouse problem this is very frustrating to scroll up and down on. You have to use, you have to be very patient. Every time you click this, you have to wait about three to five seconds before the scroll bar moves. Again, if that's your, if you're having that mouse issue, just grin and bear it until you get it updated. Uh, it requires doing a system, complete system reset to get that fixed. So it's better just grin and bear it. I do that on several systems. Okay, so these are all the things that need to be updated. And um, what you want to do, usually if you're going a, a very minor jump up from like, let's say one, let's say you're at 250 going to 254, there's usually not any issues. Um, so what usually happens is, of course, you're not getting to this every week or two, you're getting to this every year or three or four years at a time to get updated so it usually is a pretty big jump for most people and what happens is if I would hit apply now just say just get all these drivers and do all the updates it will fail and the error messages are numerous I mean not numerous but they're just not very telltale of what the real problem is and sometimes it'll get stuck during the download it's very frustrating and what I'm going to show you now is the absolute smoothest way to put the hammer on this. Basically, you're going to uncheck everything except for the iDRAC. Get the iDRAC updated first. Okay, uncheck everything. So there's the iDRAC, remote access controller. So we're doing, a, you know, again, it's been a year, so it's going to do a jump. And if you just get that updated, everything else will fall in place. Just uncheck all these things. Now, there's an iDRAC service module embedded package. I'm not sure exactly how that ties into the iDRAC controller firmware, but um, I've had no problems just unchecking that to update for the second update. But first, your first update, you need to have only the, the iDRAC performing the update. Okay, so uh, everything looks good, and that's the only thing checked. And we just hit apply. It should download it. Okay, it finished the download, and now it's beginning the actual firmware upgrade. And this will take a while, so again, we'll just I'll just pause it here. Okay, so we're moving along. It's been about two minutes here. And uh, I thought I'd mention a couple of things. I've done maybe about three to 400 servers over the past five or six years. And I want to say maybe five, six or seven of those would freeze. And 
sometimes you'll see this move and it'll like freeze and it will like you'll kind of patiently wait maybe four five six seven eight minutes and then boom it'll jump letting you know that it's still working on things so it's not uncommon for this these numbers to freeze and lock up for short periods of time and I've had it where once you've gone beyond I mean they say 40 minutes and of course they warrant which just is understandable do not restart do not re turn off the server it will restart automatically but it's like once you get to the one hour mark something's messed up if it's not completed this so when I've let them go three hours just because I didn't you know I didn't, I didn't have anything else to do I was working on other projects and I just let it sit there but even after three hours if it, if it made it to like 45 minutes or one hour it's not going to finish so at that point it's basically throwing the towel you have to force the power down by holding in the power button turn it to power it off let it reboot and you'll just have to follow the screens um, every I've never had one I never bricked anything everything works fine a couple of them uh, it did take a while like it would boot up go into life cycle and it would attempt it again on its own and it works others I it, I would get some error messages that would complain I can't remember what they were but maybe two or three reboots later I've resolved everything so uh, don't be scared about powering it off I've never had one go bad and I'm always doing them under warranty too so I can always call tech support to help me resolve any thing that that would fix it I want to say that I've had one or two servers where I absolutely could not get it to to take and it would just lock up I'd wait the, the one plus hour power it down power it back off go back in re down clear it out re download it still the same thing I don't know what it was if it was a specific version up to a specific version that it just can't be done and Dell didn't know about it and so in that case I would revert to uh, programming the iDRAC uh, remote access so I would depending on what server it was I would get this port go in here or plug into that get that static IP set up and get in there uh, there's of course you can always program uh, the iDRAC to go through the LAN on motherboard if you want to and then you just uh, browse from an external computer browse into it and um, go in there and you can actually do a firmware update by downloading the update package from Dell for your generation of server and uh, working through the iDRAC update tr menus upload that package to the server and then tell the server to perform the update uh, it's, it takes a little bit of learning to find out how, how the menu structure is set up and to find that the current download to get it updated but uh, that's another way to do it again I'm not going to go I just kind of give you a quick idea and summary of how that's done I'm not going to go through that whole procedure here and just to let you know this higher fan noise is because as the iDRAC is being updated the iDRAC is not actually running so the server decides that if I'm not in touch with the iDRAC I don't know what's going on I have to increase airflow to guarantee my temperatures and that's why you will sometimes or most of the time you will hear the increased fan speed and sometimes it can be moderate, but sometimes it can be like full, full fan speed. It'll depend on the, you know, the exact model, model of your server and revision numbers on how that plays out. Okay, so we were just over six minutes and now it is actually doing its own reboot. And you'll see here in a minute that it will just tell us it's going into the iDRAC or the uh, lifecycle controller on its own. Okay, and there it is. It's automatically going into the lifecycle controller. I did not have to push the F2 
10 key to get that done. Okay, so we're back up to the wizard screen, and I just, again, I'm keeping that there. I just could cancel out of it. And yes, I want to exit out, and I will let it pop up later. And the first thing I want to tell you is this little trick that I was so frustrated at times. I ran circles. I would go right into the firmware update screen and hit next, 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 because I've already know I've configured my network. But guess what? When you update the iDRAC, and I don't know the exact rules on what version to what version, but 85% of the time, <clears throat> updating the iDRAC controller will reset your network settings. So you've got to come back into network, and look at that. No configuration. It's supposed to retain that. And, I don't know, again, I don't know the, what forces it to go off, but um, it, it, it kind of re me memorized the fourth port. You know, usually what shows up here is port one, no config or DHCP. But the fourth port is it memorized that I had selected the fourth port, but it didn't keep my settings. So I got to come back in here, tell it again, hit finish, get that static IP, get that uh, DHCP IP address set again, and. Uh, and we're good to go. Now, what I spent months just going, again, troubleshooting all the time. I'd be like, what's wrong with my network? What's wrong with my, my network card? You know, maybe I upgraded the BIOS on the network card and I messed, the, you know, I screwed up the network card. So I would always come in here to do my firmware update and I would select my FTP site. I would cut, hit next and it would just like flake out with all these wacky error messages. Oh, we're unable to find the catalog. We're unable to find the low exact location of the drivers and all these error messages when it should be telling me, hey, you you need to set up the network connection. And normally when you come into the system, like I did the first time, and you come here without setting up your network connectivity, it will tell you, you need to set up the network connectivity and it will actually bring you right to that screen to set it up. But once you do the iDRAC update, all that falls apart and you just go on this rabbit trail troubleshooting scenario. So anyway, that's a huge hint when to pr help you pr get get all your updates done timely. Because the last thing you want to do, you want to update servers, you're not wanting to troubleshoot them. Okay, so there is another option here that shows up with the newer firmware, and that's Dell website. And uh, I'm going to, I'll show it to you, but I won't actually, well, I'll go ahead and show it to you. Okay, so Dell website, now if I do FTP, it would be the same as before, what I just went through. Dell website, you hit next. It's really the same procedure, but just these screens, you basically leave everything blank. Don't put anything in here, don't enable anything. Just hit next. And it says they recommend the use of a proxy. It's like, are you sure you want to continue without a proxy? Yes, I'm sure. And then it'll just go and uh, I guess it has the, the Dell FTP site already built in behind the scenes. And there it is. It's already connected and it's downloading the package or the list. But, uh, you know, just be aware that... Uh, this I found to work 85% of the time. I'm some. This will flake out. Let's see. Okay, so I'm getting this error message. I'm going to continue anyway. Anyway, this this will flake out sometimes, and I just go back. I go back into the FTP method, and just the same as the first time I showed you, it works great. And uh, so this one worked, it completed, and now I'm just going to update everything. So I'm choosing everything, and I usually do all the software packages, but if you know you don't want to, if you know you don't need them, why spend the time and you can uncheck your uh, your various software packages. I'm going to go ahead and include them in this update. And if, if this should, because this is unchecked, it, it should let you know that the, that update was successful. 
and of course all these uh, all these interactions here they're all logged in the lifecycle controller log and uh, so from this point everything everything can be updated including the BIOS all in one one pass so just apply that and there's my 10 update packages and I will pause and record this as we move along here okay we're now at 4 of 10, 5 of 10 and I love a little tidbit I'd share with you this list behind this this window the, our list of all the items to be updated can be very useful if you've just installed some PCI cards or even swapped out a daughter card if, if you look at the list very carefully before you apply the update you may notice sometimes that hey my daughter card is not listed in here well if something's not listed that usually means you did not seed it properly so you got to shut down the server power that down pull out the, pull out the uh, plugs and then reseat your card boot it back up come back in here and then you should see it in here okay so it's uh, just about done downloading all 10 packages and once the download is complete, it'll go into the installation phase. Okay, so it's beginning the installation phase. And on the left margin here, okay, mouse, okay. The left margin here, you'll notice um, the names of each package it's going to be working on as it... Uh, proceeds with the entire package so um, and each package so it'll give the the elapsed time and then it'll give your your total time also and also if it ever has any problems with a uh, specific package it'll put a little X here and it'll let you know I believe somewhere down here I believe it'll kind of tell you like it'll say something like one or more processes has failed just go ahead and let it continue uh, it'll finish and reboot and then you can go and figure out uh, you know why that didn't take you might just simply just try it again I've had some network cards that in the past not not so much recently in the past year or two but prior to that I'd have network cards that would not take on the first attempt and it would you know it would typically burn up all its limit time and restart and um, sometimes I would see it complete just on the second attempt after you know reboot and it would re try to reapply apply that driver or that firmware update and it would take and then other ones I would try that routine maybe three times and then I finally had power down the server and I would just reseat the network card and then it would take um, so it's interesting that a reseat sometimes would fix the problem when it could see the card and act like it was updating it but really it was struggling so anyway those are just some oddities I found over the years and also in the last few years uh, they keep the power supply the PSU firmwares out of the updates uh, I think they were finding that too many people would just defaultly just apply all the updates that were available including the power supplies and those are some tricky items to get updated properly you're really supposed to do them one at a time and uh, you know pull a power supply out let it run in a single power PSU mode and get that updated reboot then shut down pull out that power supply shove in the other one let that one get updated and that process would take you know 30 minutes per power supply so and I would say it's about a 5% failure rate and when they fail that would brick the PSU and under warranty Dell would have to ship out a new PSU very frustrating and so I, they just removed that whole ability to easily access firmware updates for PSUs and I've never since they removed that from being easily accessible I have never uh, done one since then and I've never needed to and I would only guess that you would just call up the Dell tech support for server su technical support for servers and get a technician online and he would help you resolve any issues with PSUs if they needed to be updated he would guide you how to actually do that procedure 
And what the system does here internally, it has a queue as to each of these packages getting updated. And if you were to not have your system plugged into a UPS and you had a power outage, when you started your system back up, it would automatically go back into the lifecycle controller and would see, oh, we still had some items in the queue. And it would come back to the screen and continue its update progress until everything was updated. Um, and now maybe on the one that the power failure occurred on, it may possibly skip that one, in which case you have to manually go back in, recheck for updates, and reapply it. That same queue is used if you do a remote access into the lifecycle controller, into the into the iDRAC, and you do a iDRAC firmware update through the remote access. It's possible that if you were to have attempted it, say in the console, and it failed, and then you went into the remote access scenario to do the firmware update. One time I did that where the queue got confused and it kept the original console update plus the firmware I did in the remote console session and the queue got very confused. It did do the firmware update but then it was still trying to do the original update but of course it was the same version it was going to and it just wouldn't get out of the update. So. I actually had to call for a Dell technician to help me resolve that to figure out how do you delete items in the queue. And that is a, it requires remote access and going into some shell where you issue commands to get that queue cleared up. And also notice the high fan speed sometimes happens even for the BIOS update. Again, the iDREC always does it, the BIOS does it sometimes, and uh, usually I don't notice it on any of the other uh, firmware updates. So the SAS non-RAID update is simply because that controller is an HBA controller, doesn't have RAID built into it. So another good thing to uh, make sure you don't do is uh, make sure your server, don't update your server if it's got trouble. So make sure your blue status light LEDs or LCD screens, make sure it's blue if it's orange. Or blinking orange, you know, troubleshoot that before you do firmware updates as a good rule of thumb, best practice. And just go into your, uh, go into the uh, lifecycle controller, go into the log, and see what's going on in there. Okay, so now we're in the final network card update. And uh, just so you know that these, um, there's three here, and but it's a single daughter card that I have in the system. And what it is is each of the firmwares represents a chipset on a card. So if you have a four port card, say one gigabit four port card, PCI or daughter card, there'll be four uh, firmware updates that are going to occur because each port has its own chipset that can be updated via firmware update. So uh, that's that'll answer that question. I always wondered why isn't there just one uh, update that's going to happen for the entire card. And it's no, it's each chipset on the card is recognized separately. Okay, so it's just about done and 10 of 10 tasks. We're on the last one, just about completed should take a little over two minutes to finish that up and tasks are running normally and no error messages down here so we know everything went smoothly and on the reboot we should uh, come right back up so there we go starting the reboot okay things got quiet auto start And there's
there's our new BIOS installed. And there we are entering the life cycle controller automatically without having to press F10. Okay, so now it's back up and at this point I could just click exit and yes, I want to reboot the machine and it would just reboot back into my OS if I had an OS installed in this one, which I don't. And you're done. Uh, optionally, you can um, you could go back into um, cancel this out and you could um, go back into your firmware update go through the procedure again and just to make sure that everything really is current make sure it really did take um, I, I'm pretty satisfied by the prior screen that showed everything being updated so I'm good to go with this one so thanks for watching and I appreciate any comments you got down there to help others out or help me out uh, we're all here to learn and uh, I will show you one more thing as a bonus if you wanted to know how to fix that jittery mouse by doing a reset I will show you that now so what you would do if you had that mouse problem you want to reset you go here to repurpose hardware configuration repurpose or retire the system and you can um, request the system be reset back to factory and usually what I do is I reset everything I can't uh, unfortunately I can't tell you which one of these things does it but I usually reset all these and then I hit next it asks me it warns me like oh do you really want to do this and then ask me one more time I say yes confirm and the system will uh, kind of freeze up for a lock up for about 30 seconds to a minute and power down and what you have to do is leave it plugged in and it'll be powered down and silent and you need to wait for this LED to go dark and then you can power it back up it will power back up go into the lifecycle controller knowing that it needs to clear all these things and you'll see it erase all the data and reset things not hurting any of your OS or hard drive system of course and uh, then I believe it will power down again and again you wait for the LED to go dark and then you can power it up one, the, for the final time and it should come back as a, as a cleared out server. Thanks for watching.